Good morning and happy Monday to all of our viewers out there. We celebrated a few holidays this past week, so to get it all out there, happy Cinco de Mother's Day. Even during this quarantine, our campuses found a way to celebrate the wonderful mothers we have in our midst. Thank you so much who made this all possible. Who's there? Annie's joke? Annie's joke who? Annie's joke of the week, that's who? I'm just playing with you guys. This week, we now go to Shannon with our joke of the week. All right, Greg, you ready? Where do you take someone that's been injured in a peekaboo accident? I have no idea. To the ICU. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you serious? Oh, my gosh. Who taught Brought you Brought to you joke? by my nine-year-old daughter. <laughs> Over a month ago, our Abingdon campus experienced their first COVID-19 case. Rather than run from the fear and uncertainty that comes from such news, a group of our caregivers from our campuses across the Commonwealth volunteered to assist the brave folks at our Abingdon campus. We now go to two of those traveling heroes to hear more about their experience. I'm Timothy Bowling. I like to be called Timmy. Um, I'm an RMA here at English Meadows. Actually, I believe I just met my three-month mark back in April. Wow. Actually. Okay, awesome. What did you uh, do before you worked at English Meadows? I was actually a resident care and then became an RMA. How did you hear about English Meadows? Her name's Helen. I love Helen. Um, Helen Alala. I uh, Ayala, can't pronounce <laughs> her last name. She really got me into it. I'm really close with Helen, and then she introduced me to English Meadows, and I honestly, I fell in love with the company. You, like, it's a great company to work for. And, uh, you know, everybody says that each job has, the, you know, their ups and downs, which is absolutely true, but honestly, I haven't really had one really bad down at all with English Meadows. I love it. You guys are phenomenal. Um, I really love how, like, we're basically a big family. Hmm, that's really cool. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Timmy. You know, with the COVID-19 cases, positives that came up, when you found out about those, you, you're one of the, the few folks from our company statewide that volunteered, hey, here I am, send me to Abingdon, I'll go help out. What was going through your mind at that time where you decided to volunteer to go help out? I'm just one of those type of people that I'm always looking for a new opportunity and always looking for more experience and everything, especially with me being in healthcare. Yeah, everybody's talking about how scary this is, but you know, the world's already a scary place as it is. This is just another thing, and I'm always willing to help anybody out, and I really felt like it was kind of like my job or like my part to do in this whole uh, big role we all have to play in with this virus. And really, when I got that message, because you know, Melinda, she posted in our workplace, like, hey, is anybody willing? And automatically, I was like, absolutely, because, you know, when she gave me more details and talked about how, you know, staff was out sick and other staff, you know, wasn't really, it wasn't working out. And that honestly alone really kind of, you know, made me brought tears to my eyes because I'm just one of those people, like, I'm here for the residents. And I want to make sure those residents get the best care because, you know, I can't imagine what's going through these residents' minds. Hmm. And so I'm just really here to, you know, make sure they're, com like, they're comforted and to do everything I can. What has your experience been like since you've been down in? Abingdon. Well, I honestly was expecting, you know, a lot worse. We all see this on the news, like all these scary things happening. And honestly here, you know, of course it's very unfortunate with what's was going on and what's happened, but it's honestly not nearly as bad as I, you know, thought it was going to be. Of course, wearing our PPE, keeping, you know, everybody safe, making sure, you know, they're still having the best time while they can, while they're, you know, with us. It's honestly not that bad. I would do it all over again if I could. Wow, <laughs> I'm kind of like getting goosebumps as you say that. We really appreciate everything you guys have done down in Abingdon and honestly, how all our caregivers have stepped up. We'll get through this. Yeah, it's very difficult, but you know, with any new kind of virus, disease, anything, it's going to be scary. You know, we got to learn as much as we can about it. We got to, you know, have our eyes laid on it. We got to have experience with it. And it's going to be difficult, by, and I'm not saying it's going to be easy by any means, but it's, you will get through it and, you know, we're all going to come up on top and we'll get through this, you know, together. My name is Emily and I work as a medication aide. When did you decide to go down to Abingdon? Maybe a week after they had posted something about them having um, a positive case and needing help. And so I volunteered to come help. Awesome. What... What kind of motivated you to go 
help out down in Abingdon. I was kind of like, you know, it'd be a nice experience to go visit another campus. But at the same time, you know, the residents depend on us. If we're not there to take care of them, then they don't have anyone to do it. So I wanted to help out so that they weren't, you know, left stranded. What has your experience been like since you've been down there? The coworkers that I work with, they're all awesome. They're so nice. The residents are great. They're some of the sweetest people I've met. Any words of encouragement or advice you would give to um, a fellow senior living worker? Main thing is to stay positive, you know. You understand that there is a risk that you could get sick, but you don't want to let that affect, you know, the way you do your job or anything else of that sort. You still want to come in with the same positive attitude and take care of them as you would any other day. Whether you think you are or not, uh, I know our team here in Crozet, and honestly, throughout the Commonwealth at all our campuses, um, we think all of our caregivers are heroes, honestly. Um, so we appreciate all that you have done, Emily, and stepping up and eagerly and willingly go down at Abingdon. So thank you for all that you've done as well. Thank you so much, Timmy and Emily. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for helping out and stepping up to go to our Abingdon campus. Speaking of Bananas Foster. All right, we're in the kitchen in Crozet right now. It is currently 640 in the morning. And I think Val is going to whip up some Bananas Foster for us. Uh, for our 11 to 7 crew here in Crozet. So stay tuned and we're about to make some Bananas Foster. Okay. <laughs> All righty. learning something new. Val, thank you so much for teaching myself and Chris how to make incredible Bananas Foster French toast. You know the old saying, I've got to see a man about a horse? Well, that horse came to us. <laughs> Thank you so much to Horse and Soul Counseling at Higgins Hill Farm in Culpeper, Virginia. Well, thank you to everyone for watching this week, and thank you to our residents and caregivers. Without you all, there would be no English Meadows Good News Show. So, for everyone here at the show, stay safe and stay healthy. Take care, everybody.